Sure. So once again, hi everyone, and welcome to Data Minute Minutes Conference uh, from my side. Uh, as this is a 10-minute session, I will not go into details about myself. Uh, just a few sentences. Uh, my name is Nikola Ilic, and I'm making music from the data. All the other information you will find on this slide, as uh, William already mentioned, I'm planning to share uh, my presentation afterward. Um, so transitioning from attendee to a presenter looks like a mountain to climb on, but is it really like that? Uh, feeling nervous, having jitters, uh, my hands were sweating. Uh, oh my God, I thought in five minutes I would present to the public for the first time in my life. Uh, I'll be honest and say that I'm not an introverted person, not extrovert either, but more of a mix between these two, depending on the situation. But a few seconds into my speaking, uh, the B and first few sentences, I could hardly recognize my own voice. Uh, fast forward 60 minutes and I've officially became a public speaker. So what would a fresh public speaker do first thing after a presentation? Well, drink two liters of water, feeling drained and exhausted after talking for more or less 60 minutes without break. So today I want to share uh, my thoughts with others, hoping that my experience will be useful and encouraging for all of you who are thinking to publicly, publicly present, but maybe you're not sure if you have what it takes to do that. So how it all started for me. Uh, last year in, in May, uh, my fellow countryman and one of globally most respected SQL Server experts, uh, Miloš Divojevic, sent me a link about the new Stars of Data conference and suggested to submit a session. I used to bother Miloš whenever I needed some in-depth explanation related to SQL Server, but I wasn't sure if I'm competent enough to present something, you know, to a group of people. However, Miloš encouraged me to submit a session. I did it, and at the end of May, I've received an email from the organizers. You probably know those two guys, Ben and William, uh, that are behind also Data Minutes Conference. So uh, maybe someone will think that I'm your cousin or relative, or you are giving me a chance at each conference that you organize. But yeah, it's it's yeah, just kidding. Uh, so my session was accepted, and it, at that moment I felt both flattered and surprised, uh, to be honest. But it was just the beginning. The whole idea of this conference was to give a chance to new speakers on Microsoft Data Platform topics, but with one more uh, important benefit. Uh, every one of us uh, would get a mentor, uh, seasoned speakers who will work with us on, uh, on session preparation. And I was lucky enough to be paired with Wolfgang Strasser. Uh, besides being a, a data platform MVP and true Power BI expert, Wolfgang was positive and supportive from the very beginning, which really meant a lot to me as a complete newcomer. We had online meetings every Wednesday and Wolfgang gave me really a bunch of priceless tips, not specifically related to this, uh, to this session only, but for speaking in general. For example, how to use additional tools such as uh, Zoomit, or, or uh, he gave me recommendations how to prepare a short to-do script before the presentation begins, or how to stick with timings without violating session flow. So what's the moral of this story? Uh, there are a lot of awesome people around that will gladly help you and support you if needed. And I truly believe that we have a wonderful community and everyone can be given a, a helping hand if needed, of course. Since I honestly believe that practice makes perfect perfection, I've done multiple rehearsals, somewhere between 12 and 15, I'm not sure. And yeah, after brainstorming with my mentor and shaping the session, the day has come. So it was August last year and I presented for the first time. Being nervous is not a shame. And I started, as I said, with little jitters and I could even feel the nervousness in my own voice while speaking the first few introductory sentences. I was not afraid, you know, of doing something wrong within my presentation. I practiced so much that I was truly confident. I was more concerned about the things you can't predict. For example, what uh, if my internet crashes or what if my hardware or, or, or software stop working during the session? But as the presentation flew, I felt more and more confident. In the end, I've even quickly taken a look uh, into se session chat and realized that people were enjoying it. And that was really amazing, really satisfying. And even more satisfying was the moment when I realized that some, let's call them VIP Power BIers, uh, such as Matthew Roche from Microsoft or Adam Sexton from Gyna Cube, 
people that I have the utmost respect for. They tweeted some nice things about my session. And a few days later, I got official feedback from the organizers, and it appeared that attendees, 42 of them, uh, according to official resources, were really satisfied, or they were polite enough not to discourage a newcomer. Uh, now I have felt quite flattered with those stats. I would also I would have also liked to know which parts of the session were less convincing and how can I improve the content and presentation. So my key takeaways from uh, this uh, this first uh, public speaking experience and after that I had like around 45 uh, different uh, speaking engagements uh, starting from uh, large conferences to, to local user group meetings. So if you plan to speak for the first time, try to find a mentor. Trust me, it would be extremely hard. I won't say impossible, but definitely extremely hard to prepare the session properly without the assistance of seasoned speakers. Believe me, they've been there, done that. So their tips and suggestions are the greatest benefits that you will have uh, through the pro uh, preparation process. Speaking for an hour or a few minutes longer while keeping your focus at maximum level is really physically exhaustive. As I already mentioned in the beginning, after my first session, I drank two liters of water. Insist, always insist on feedback. Uh, that's the invaluable resource to help you calibrate your session and see what is good and more important, what is, let's say, not bad, but less good. Uh, Plan your time ahead for the audience questions. Uh, remember that your session is a two way communication between your audience and you. Uh, of course, try to keep answers short and in case that there are too many questions or you don't know the answer from the top of your head. Yes, you're of course allowed to say I don't know. Uh, consider coming back later to your audience with the answers to their questions. For example, I did that by collecting all the questions from uh, from the audience and posting the answers later in a separate blog post. And I assure you that your audience will appreciate that. Again, practice makes perfection. Keep repeating this. It doesn't matter how good you know a specific topic. Uh, practicing will boost your confidence and make your presentation more convincing. Few more good to know things or I call this my checklist uh, for preparing the session. Uh, carefully choose the topic of your session and try to avoid speaking about things or tools that you don't know or you don't know enough. Put your uh, maximum effort to come up with a title and abstract that will be both appealing and informative. Try to attract people to get involved within your session and but in the end don't fool them. Your session needs to follow the key points from the abstract you, you defined. Try to find the right balance between depth and width within your session as it's really hard to cover everything in one single session in let's say 60 minutes. So keep that in mind and try to find the right balance between these two. Then try to find out more about your audience. Uh, when you're presenting on site, it's not a problem to ask your audience to raise a hand and uh, answer your question. But the challenge with online sessions is that you can't see your audience and people's reactions. Therefore, I prefer sometimes to ask attendees to fill a short poll in Microsoft Forms by answering just one simple question. Uh, what is their level of expertise on the topic I present? And that gives me a better insight into the audience so I can adjust specific, specific parts of my presentation if necessary. Be careful when you're using demos in your presentation. Uh, you need to describe all steps you're applying, not just you know, flying between the windows. Additionally, while you're waiting for your, let's say, uh, SQL query to execute, if it takes a while, make sure to fill the silence with some explanation or talking. Uh, don't just leave it blank. Don't forget to check all your technical prerequisites before the session. You really don't want to realize that your hardware or software doesn't work in the middle of the presentation. There are really a lot more things to pay attention to. Finally, many books were written on this topic, so I will just briefly mention some of those things like uh, eye contact on for on site sessions, uh, dress codes, uh, level of humor to be used during the presentation, etc. To wrap up, I will borrow a quote from Paul Randall's article where he used a brilliant metaphor uh, to gladiator movie. And yeah, I know that 
you all watched this movie at least five times. So you can probably recall the scene when old retired gladiator Proximo tells Maximus how to succeed in his battle. And he told him, I was not the best because I killed quickly. I was the best because the crowd loved me. So win the crowd and you will win your freedom, which was the ultimate goal for Maximus. So as Paul rightly concluded in his article, if your audience feels the pleasure of being there, being entertained, learning something cool and new, something useful, or having that aha feeling after your session, then you as a public speaker did a good job and you are on the right track to be considered successful. Once again, thanks for attending this session and I hope that you will enjoy the rest of Data Minutes conference. Thank you all.